we can't talk about Luther in the same week that R. Kelly just dropped the album. The <laughs> fuck? From prison. From prison. Admitting. <laughs> what was he in prison for? Which we already <laughs> that knew. That shit was ghost written by OJ. They was young, but I ain't no <laughs> pedophile. Come on, now. <laughs> That's not what we want to call it. Kelly said, I ain't abusing, abusing. Oh. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh, my gosh. All right. So we have um, something to start us off with, something that brings us all together, because people are wondering probably why we're the three of us in this They group. already saw the Daily Show. Sharing. I hope they're excited. <laughs> <laughs> they saw that. They, yeah, of course they did. Because they were searching porn and somehow we popped up. Yeah, but he on our turf now, so you know what that <laughs> yeah, means. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, he's I'm like, here to fuck up your algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we asked uh, our brother from Legacy, my, my bio brother, to give us an icebreaker. So we're going to we're gonna do something with these. Yeah. Appropriate. What's going on though? Yeah. Hey, so, Victorious. Yes, yes. I bought a bunch of records. Mm -hmm. The time it was Bring Sexy. Mm -hmm. So there's some sexy, there's some regular. I want to see who finds the sexiest record. Okay. Yeah, All right. All right. Well, right. we'll let our, our guests yeah. dig first. We can dig now, am I, am, I, am I pulling blind or am I just going to. No, 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 just, no, no, no. Well, I'm just take a look, take a look. Yeah. I'm just going to, you know, see what I got right here. <laughs> okay, now I don't know who these brothers are. <laughs> They got the Lionel Richie afro. They doing something though. Well, yeah, that's in Spanish. I can't read that. Los Quinton Exatiantes. Okay, and then they go again. All right, yeah, these brothers. Yeah. They got a couple joints. How you get, what's that, Big Daddy Kane? How you pull Big Daddy Kane? <laughs> I like his <laughs> I like his name. <laughs> you got tribe. <laughs> I mean, it's got electric relaxation on it, mm. which which is definitely Sexy Yo, I gotta, right I gotta okay. give a quick shout out to Big Daddy Kane, man. Big yeah. Daddy Kane is in this, um, this live New Jack City stage play that's touring right now. Okay, is he? and yo, killing doing it, his thing? killing it, man. Like I'm not, like it sounds crazy on paper. Like the, the, the black movie as a play. No, we don't. Shit was entertaining, man. Let me tell you where he got Darius his warm Johnson up from. got a hit. Like, that. Where he got his warm up at? Well, yo. Kane was in Playboy back in the day. Yeah, he was. And yeah, I remember he he took the people people was going after him. Now mm -hmm. you see a lot of rappers starting their own OnlyFans or even mm -hmm. managing adult yeah. performers OnlyFans and shit like that. So mm -hmm. he's a trailblazer. He was. He was. Big Daddy Kane made room for Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> well, you know what I what I what I like about what I enjoy, I got Public Enemy. Welcome to the Terror Dome. What's what a, sexy about that? What, uh, Knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Information. What he said. Okay, sapiosexual. <laughs> what I appreciated about Big Daddy Kane was that he always made records. He made sure that his album's kind of like LL Cool J, where I'm going to make sure that I'm talking to women at some point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. in a couple of these songs mm -hmm. so that they feel engaged. Like, yeah. this ain't just, I'm going to kill, I'm going to gangster, I'm going to murder my love. Like, <laughs> right. nah. Also, ladies, she has some sexy. That Let's smooth operator. <laughs> I met him at, um, when I was like six years old, and he was, he was nice enough to stop his dinner and say hi to me. So <laughs> he was a childhood crush, and I think I'm old enough to crush now. So what's up, Big Daddy Kane? I haven't met any of my childhood crushes. No, like I wouldn't even. When would I even run into them? Like when am I gonna run into Keisha Knight Pulliam? Like I don't. Oh, but at the HBCU it. reunion, you could do it now. I guess Daily Show keep us so busy. I don't get to go to shit. And like no. I would. All right, maybe that. Um, Laura Winslow, uh, Kelly. I think is it Kelly Williams. Which I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna Google her name and I'm gonna make sure I get okay. her name. What right show was she on? Uh, Laura Winslow. Family I Matters. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Steve yeah. Urkel's girl. I had a crush on. Oh yeah. And, uh, but I try to make sure that I see Got people's name, right? actual name, right? Because right. I don't like calling the. You know, black people. We love to do that. Whatever role we know you from. <laughs> that's your name forever. That's forever. You for the rest of your life. I was. Um, I was in the airport with Carl Anthony Payne. And um, mm. we're coming off the plane, and folks are just calling him Cole from the gate to baggage claim. Wow. Hey, Cole, where Martin at? Cole, where Martin? You know how you just want to be mad on a nigga's behalf? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> to the point where I'm walking with him. Can I get a picture, Cole? Nah, he ain't doing no pictures. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he don't know me for shit. I'm just some comedian he recognized. But I'm like walking with him. Yo, y'all back up off of Cole. I mean, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the your security. name is. Yeah. That's what we'll say. Yeah. What you got? Biggie. Okay, what's sexy about One that one? One more chance. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a classic right there. Yeah. Big Papa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So you pick Public Enemy for your sapiosexual. Um, you have Big Daddy Kane, and no, you have Big Daddy Kane. Oh, I have Big Daddy Kane. I'm still thinking about Big Daddy Kane. Um, yeah, Kelly Williams. <laughs> I was right. I know my crushes. Laura Winslow. Kelly okay. Williams. Well, since we all throwing our crushes out there, mm-hmm. Sade, when you get back on this uh, world tour, throw me some tickets. You really doing this? <laughs> you really doing this? I am. I'm shooting my shot. You sh- you, you shot your shot. I'm with my crush. How about that? No, oh. you already you already said <laughs> oh. Big no, no. Daddy Kane. No, no. I said when I was five. Late. I said when I was five. Oh no. But, I, heard, um, I heard some grow up in there too. In the spirit of keeping this podcast going. <laughs> <laughs> I believe our sponsors at Legacy said that our guests get to keep their selection. So Wow. Yeah. Well, thank y'all. <laughs> to me, here's the thing about public enemy. You also have to uh, let me give just a quick little backstory about my upbringing, you know. Mm-hmm. My mother is, I think, entering her fourth decade in higher education at a black college. And my father is what was a civil rights journalist for the better part of his life. So everything in the house was about black knowledge, black power, and knowing more and and knowing yourself. So mm-hmm. when th- like this was one of the first rap albums that I could listen to in the house. Okay. Like like public one of the first rap artists that I could just openly listen to. Because a lot of it was about black positivity. Mm-hmm. It was about black power. And I think when you talk about, you know, grooming young leaders and grooming young black men into something so that they're aware, you know, just on some third eye open type shit, you know, I do think that there's something dope about men who care about the next generation of black men. And I right. think if you do that the right way, a woman would be like, ooh, I want to have a baby with Bye. him. <laughs> Facts. Yo, shout out, shout out, shout out to, shout out to Public Enemy for doing that for years, strong, mm-hmm. and Chuck still out there, still doing touring. what's right, still touring, and also you know guiding younger artists and, and Chuck D and all pull of up that. to Chuck D pull up to them black colleges, man, and be speaking like he's yep. not just rapping no more. Like it's mm-hmm. it's one of the he has one of the more interesting second acts. Of that first generation of rap of of hip hop, in my opinion, but yeah, shout out to them, man. And shout out for that line about Elvis is lame, motherfuck him and John Wayne forever, <laughs> <laughs> forever, forever. <laughs> also, Elvis I know was shout- a hero the most, <laughs> but he never meant shit to me. Shout out to Legacy. Um, definitely make sure that y'all roll down there. I also know in there is, you know. This Marvin Gaye album that has what is my favorite Marvin Gaye song, If I Die Tonight, which I think just writing, it's like one of those songs, like, you know how like sometimes you be like, damn, how can you really put love Mm -hmm. and lust and passion into words? And he's like, yo, if I die tonight, be far before my time, but I need this moment with you type shit. Like that shit, that song sexy as fuck. Mm. But I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm snatch that right. That's away. that. <laughs> that's that 1.0. That's like up there with that. Um, who did that? Was it a Jaheem? Just in case. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> Jaheem said, "I might die when I leave the house. Let me go and hit that one more time." One that's more that time. Jersey shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that Jersey shit. Very right there. upfront with his rendition. We upfront like yo. <laughs> Bitches killers out there. <laughs> Take the panties off. <laughs> Just in case I don't make it home to <laughs> At least he said make love. That was nice. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. We know what he means. Yeah. <laughs> Drop them drops. <laughs> All right. So we are so honored to be joined by a comedian extraordinaire, actor, writer, producer, and philanthropic, like, you're a hero. I out have my there. days. I ain't no hero. No, I just you... try to make Alabama better. You you're doing it. it. That in you're itself is it. heroic. Right. <laughs> uh, increasing the literacy rate for young folks there, helping people get matched to jobs. Like that's what's up. Yeah, we try. We try. You know, it's easier in Birmingham. The hurdle is when you leave them little democratic pockets in the mm-hmm. state and you try to do like 
philanthropic work and stuff. Like I won't, without getting into a lot of the details of it, you know, we're trying to still introduce um, film and TV crew um, training. Okay. Only way you can get film and TV is if you got places to train crew. And so I had it laid out with some of my connects, you know, the one thing I am grateful for in the city of Birmingham is that, you know, for the 10, 15 years that I did morning radio, I made a lot of connects. I ain't never asked mm-hmm. for no favors. And everybody that was here is now here. And they still, they honor and I, like I'm calling in markers out the ass the last couple of years. And we were trying to get some film and TV stuff done. And we were going to get a lot of it done at a particular black community college mm-hmm. uh, in central Alabama. But it's a predominantly black because it's one of the ones in the hood. And what it was basically laid out to me was, and it wasn't said like this, but this is what they were saying, is that in the state of Alabama, you can't do nothing that's going to benefit a black college, even if it's a community college, if there ain't a way, if there ain't a way for the white to have school, access to it. To have access to it as well. But if they don't want to do it, then you can't do it. Damn. So it's you know it's stupid shit. Like 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 this is the same state where our mayor Randall Woodfin tried to raise minimum wage statewide, citywide mandatory minimum wage. City of Birmingham tried to raise it to fifteen dollars. Montgomery, it was like nah, fuck y'all doing up there. Keep that shit down at seven eight dollars, whatever the fuck it is. So that's the stuff you're kind of up against. And so you know I don't have a lot of. Like, I'll say, I'm quick to say, I don't think I'm a celebrity. I'm just on cable. Like, I'm recognizable. Like, but I'm not, like, everybody. Like, oh, there you go. Oh, oh, TMZ. But I got just enough leverage to where I can try and get some shit done or get some outside money to come into the city to make sure, you know, the literacy rate with black kids as it relates to, you know, going to prison. Mm Mm-hmm. If you learn how to read, you're less likely to go to prison. Statistics is just that simple. Mm-hmm. So fuck it. Let me figure out a way to get some money to get yeah. some books into the city. Like well, that's it's definitely about doing what you can. Like a lot of times people make it seem like, yo, I gotta get to this magical millions mm-hmm. to be able to help the hood or help my people in some sort of way. Like in any way you can and you live in proof and testament to that. Bro, we got a my high school baseball team, which I wrote the bench on. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, the folks over at Meta and Oculus had reached out for me to do some shit. Cause I can't even remember what it was. But I just told my people, I was like, they asked some white folks if they'd give me some free headsets. And they were like, yeah, they said they'll give you five. I'm like, all right, bet. There's a company that does baseball, that has like VR baseball batting, for, like a VR training. That, ask them if they'll donate the software to them goddamn headsets that the mother white folk. And they were like, yeah. And so I took them shits down to the baseball team because when you look at, and this is a predominantly black baseball team, when you're playing baseball as a black kid, baseball low-key is turning into golf, it's mm-hmm. turning into tennis. You know, niggas is getting priced out of it. You can't play, to to go pro, you got to play mm-hmm. travel ball because when you play in a city, when you play at a city level, at least in Birmingham, you don't always see the best competition because all the black kids that are good at baseball are probably good at another sport. Mm -hmm. So they're somewhere at another school. So if this will help them get better at baseball and maybe fuck going pro, just get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't seeing 95 mile an hour sliders every day, which is what you need to see to get better at this, then put on this fucking headset that these white folks gave me and go stand your ass in the gym Mm -hmm. and hit 95 mile an hour sliders. And then go get a scholarship. That's the... So, I mean, I'm not, I can't pull up with a truck full of headsets for everybody, but goddamn, here's four for the baseball team, here's one for the library, so that the rest of the students in the school can learn about Web 3.0 mm-hmm. and Metaverse and all these other places wherever everything is supposed to go eventually, and that's going to take all the jobs. Go on and <laughs> learn now about what's going to take the job that you think you want to. Damn. <laughs> it's like just so much that we have to do. To get our to get our people to what seems like the baseline, and then the damn baseline moves. You mm-hmm. know? But we're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're trying. But you know, mm-hmm. I I'll just say this: like I know that I've been blessed for since '98 to be able to grow as a comedian and an entertainer and do a bunch of other different shit. But 
I know all of this shit just leads back to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm doing now, let me go on and start planting some seeds of goodness so that when I am eventually back there, the relationships will be in place and the groundwork will be in place to truly do stuff that can, you know, make some degree of change. But, you know, it's weird working for The Daily Show because The Daily Show is so global. And maybe it was just that under Trevor, but it's such a globally minded show and nationally minded. But really, all I care about is state and local politics because that's where the change happens. Like, that's where the activists are. Them the people doing all the actual shit. Like, we focus on the policymakers all the time when we forget that there's people Mm -hmm. at the state and local level that are the ones that are actually, you know, the tip of the sword. So I'm more interested in those stories. Well, that's why it's like if you look at people who are looking to do the opposite to our community, to keep us away from all those things, have been telling their folk to get involved as local as possible. That's why you see all these people trying to stop woke and stop gay and all that shit at yeah. all the school board meetings. Um, even yeah, what's, motherfuckers organized. what's his name? Mm-hmm. State, Steve Bannon told them years ago, go be the tech, go, go be part of your local school board. Go be part of this, go be part of City all Council. these local mm-hmm. things. So then you can control what, what is and what isn't happening in your area and then just ripple it out and shit. Right. Which, um, which does lead to one of our questions for you is being that you focus on black folk, we in our industry, because we focus on black folk, run into certain glass ceilings and glass walls and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Have you have you found that within comedy that you run into those same sort of problems anywhere, whether it be with clubs or, or trying to get projects off the ground? Is with the second thing. The clubs, not so much, because black people spend money. Comedy clubs fuck with black comedians hard. Like okay. I if there's racism and discrimination within the clubs, a lot of it comes from them trying to penny pinch on the money and lie about how many tickets you sold. Like it's just mm. janky promoter shit. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say that that's, that is racism that can be navigated and there's ways around that shit. Like you can get around that shit. But when you pitch a TV show, mm-hmm. that's a black show. And then if it's too black, you know, they might not pick it up. So then you got to trick and act like, oh, no, it's a show about cultural and and poverty. And 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 then pick it up and go, trick you, bitch. It was black as fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, because that shit was black as fuck, the most recent one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to use that approach or you at a point where you're like, they know that you're just going to be? They know. Okay. They, they know now. But for me, like with my stand-up, it's basically, here's the black issue that you only see in a binary sense, Mm -hmm. let me introduce a third angle to the conversation. Mm -hmm. I might not have a solution. Like I'm not trying to be no, Mm -hmm. here's the problem and here's how you (laughs) fix it. It's just, no, here's stand for the anthem, take a knee for the anthem. Wait, why do we even play the anthem? Like that's the bigger, fuck standing or kneeling, why is this song even being played Mm -hmm. before a game? Like it's not like on some indoctrination type shit. So like that, That's where I choose to try to explore my comedy. But, you know, being a black person in entertainment, you 1 million percent run into a lot of different hurdles um, at the development level. And I think that a lot of it is gaslighting where you're not told. You're told, oh, no, everything's cool. Mm -hmm. But you know deep down, well, somebody's fucking with me. Yeah. And we spend the money. That's the thing, like, even, I mean... Like you said with the comedy shows, but also just in general, black folk, we spend money on entertainment mm-hmm. when we like the shit. Yeah, if mm-hmm. a comedy club was wrong to black to a black, like a, any prominent black comedian that sells tickets, like I'm talking like a Samore or D.L. Hughley or an Earthquake, like if them niggas say that club is a no fly zone for black comics, then it's a no fly zone, and then. What is that club going to do? Because right. there aren't enough white comics selling tickets at that level mm. for that club. Ain't no comedy club that's open 52 weeks a year only booking white boys. Mm. You can't. You, like, you you just can't. And, like, to sell real tickets to make real money? No. 
It's like porn you can't do without us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, explain that. <laughs> yeah, right. You just, so you, it's the same shit. Yeah, same shit. Like you can't. You, but the you, highest selling shit? Yeah, is either interracial or it has some some point of people of color with it. So it's just like, you know. So these companies who make all these films at some point, if they, they want to yeah. be profitable. Or even I mean, a like performer. If you, if you think about it, I mean, whether it was interracial or because, you know, we're not people. We're, we're categories. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be like big black dick, Latina, you know, all these all these categories of mm -hmm. people, Asian, mm -hmm. or you know what I'm saying? Like they they can't make it without us, but they always then make a whole lot of shit without us. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or make like, deals or, as if it or could if be you, done. Yeah. Or if you look at like award shows or things like that, they they don't have black hosts, even if the top selling performer of that year or the top Search performer that year was a black or brown woman or something. You know what I mean? They, they still don't, don't care. Nope. Mm -hmm. it's, you know what's interesting about your interest, industry that I think is a little different from comedy? Same but different. Is there accountability or call-out culture for people, for black people to do stuff that, per, that, like, that perpetuates stereotypes? Like if you choose to be mm -hmm. in the slavery porno, Within your industry, is there, hey man, why the fuck would you do that thing? Because like as a comedian, if you if you made a show that was too far to the left of what black folks are like, yo man, why would you make mm -hmm. black people look like that? Mm -hmm. A couple comedians are gonna call you out, but more importantly, like black people in the streets are gonna call you out about it. In the streets, so, yeah, more than other people in the performer community that I've seen. I will say black women in the industry for sure, mm -hmm. but it might not be black women who have the loudest voices. But or the like, biggest platform, or the biggest right? platforms, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, I think with black men within the industry, it's such a, a small number of people that everybody, if they, if they shoot primarily for mainstream porn, they're all afraid to lose whatever that spot is. So they don't want to say anything that could piss off any of those companies. And there's also this thing about being sexually open and allowing people their sexual expressions. And there's like as if there is a separation between reality and what we do sexually, yeah. um, where it's almost like if you yuck somebody for being for participating in that, it's like you are attacking their sexual preference and orientation. Shame. Um, you're shaming them, yeah. which is a little bit different when you're talking about um comedy for for whatever reason they're you know separate in that yeah. way also sometimes like we we were talking with you before about is you might be in a scene that was just like i, I think you actually got brought it up on the show the black black wives matter scene okay we actually knew the woman that was on the cover of that box mm -hmm. and talking to her she was like no one told me that's what it was they were just told they just told me i was shooting with a white guy because in that particular scene he wasn't like no hun Black Wives Matter or some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so the title is just clickbait. They just yeah, threw yeah. that shit on there at the time. But then there's other people who have been in scenes where you'd be like, You had like to know the, that the shit. One, um, <laughs> now, I always forget their name, but it's the one where it's the two white ladies that dress as cops and shit. Oh, yeah. And they're they pulling over black men. And then basically it's like, you're. I've, I, I will call that shit out because technically y'all are just playing off of this shit that's off of trauma. beyond. What needs to be out there and shit. Okay. But then people were looking at me like, why are you why are you fucking with people back? And I'm like, nah, that shit is wrong, B, like across the board. You know, the other thing too is that people in the industry get a pass on being I ignorant. Even though we may know them, like, you know you know better. Like, we know you and we know you know better. I think people in comedy, uh, folks think like, like you, we know you definitely know better because we know a little bit more about who you are as a human. Like yeah. that you went to fam, or like that you are on the Daily Show and you know these issues and how they impact. For us, we be getting a pass on, you know. People, people don't have to actually share parts of their lives, mm -hmm. how they grew up, where they grew up. So some people also they real like, name. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they might not. They might be like, yo, I might be from Birmingham, but I ain't never going back. I live in L.A. now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people gotcha. might have that kind of mentality. So as they well. don't have a connection to. The, they don't feel a responsibility to the mm -hmm. culture in that degree. Right. Because also, when people see you and know you in the airport, they'll holler at you. They might look at us. 
Ain't like, say I don't that. know if I should say that I know this person right now. <laughs> I can't uh, say I know Jess yes, and Jasmine because people gonna know <laughs> how I know her. I'm either in therapy or I'm in a rest. <laughs> One of the two. Don't worry. I like I will never disclose. <laughs> but it's but it's like you do you do like people will look at you mm-hmm. and they trying to catch your eye mm-hmm. and they'll give you one of these and you're like that's creepy as fuck. Yeah. So, but uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> just pay for our bill. You can do that. Like you don't even have to say anything. Just just take nah, care of our bill. When I'm out, my head on a swivel though, man, because you yeah. know, I guess the difference between between us is that with the Daily Show. You know, to me, politics is wrestling with consequences. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like the people at the top bickering and arguing with each other, both sides, and ah, CRT, ah, black history, ah, no CRT. Like, the people invested in those conversations are crazy enough to pull up on the White House on January 6th. So if you'll pull up on the motherfucking government, for doing what you don't agree mm-hmm. with. What you gonna do to me on a regular day in New York City if you catch me walking by? That's true. And I'm not saying that that's the norm, but I just, I am, when people look at me, I speak, I'm bombing first. Cause I want, cause if you want some fuck shit, y- you can read it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can read it. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you can't hide evil intent. Mm-hmm especially not at a distance. So for me, I'm trying to get more information from you. I, I'm not sure if you man, it's cold out here. Man, what, whatever it is, I'm going to break the ice. And if you're a friend, you're going to take the conversation to a friendly place. And if you foe, you're going to ice grill me. You're going to, you know, like, whatever it is, but know that I see you. Know that I am aware that you're in my space, like that type of shit. So they do have that in our industry too. Mm-hmm. Of We get the re- religious zealots. Yeah. who are like, porn shouldn't be a thing, or if you're queer yeah, or trans or something oh, like that. Shit. Like, I know people yeah. who've, who've had motherfuckers show up at their house yeah. looking to kidnap them yeah. to try and With teach them. With ties and to, everything. To try and, yeah, on some storm in the capital shit mm-hmm. to try yeah. and teach them to not be, to not have made them gay for liking their shit. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You're, so, you're, you're an evil deity in my world. I must destroy you in order to heal you must go away. And then type also shit. with what with with what you got, we'll get the how dare you bring CRT into my jerk off time. <laughs> <laughs> but but for real, like you you've also gotten um hate hate mail through the internet and messages and stuff because of your religious background, um, because of your sexual exploration as a black man. Um, they sent my entire triple x twitter portfolio to um to florida congress to the department that i worked for for the government that i don't work for no more (laughs) jeez (laughs) yeah so we are we do have a lot more in common our people do a a little our our people our not people (laughs) our (laughs) Our our enemies our our haters you know they they um are i guess a little bit more um undercover or like direct i don't know it's hard to say because of people showing up at people's houses and calling they, the people on a on on their households yeah i don't know like when i think about comedy like and i think about somebody like like dick gregory or somebody mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. you know they probably got like the whole fbi file yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. like that i don't know if there are any porn stars specifically who got the whole yeah. file like that but i but i definitely know that there are you know whether it be people of color who who speak out about the industry or people who are, you know, across the LGBT spectrum, who there's just, they're people who are like, nah, like this got to stop because it's, it's also one of those talking points that's mm-hmm. really big right now yeah. with everybody. So, yeah, I've just, I've just never, and I never really thought like this until I started working at the Daily Show. Mm-hmm. And then once you know, once once everything got flipped to Trump and folks was like really like running up on motherfuckers and then and then, you know, they I wanna say they started running up on Asians, but it became more prevalent within mm-hmm. the news cycle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, okay, so they really all right. So that's what we doing? 
So y'all make sure Hit the door is locked before they come shit up the rotunda. <laughs> 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 like, it's so, yeah, scary. I just I keep my head on a swivel because I also know that, you know, the type of stand up that I do, you know, as it grows and as I mature as an artist, I'm gonna be talking a lot more shit. You know, and people love to try and shut you up. And it seems like that's very similar mm-hmm. with you all. They want you to stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. Even though millions of people fuck with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's it's the same thing. You a black man with a voice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're choosing to express yourself how you want to express yourself, when, where, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's the same kind of thing where our sexuality was defined by white people. Cross the board. I was just reading this whole thing about um, the slave that escaped from Martha Washington. I got to look up her name, so please excuse me, everybody. You were reading this last night <laughs> like at 4.30 four in, in the morning, <laughs> sharing this hori- the horrific details of this. <laughs> Yo, she, she escaped Martha Washington, and George Washington was trying to find this, this woman. Um, she escaped to New Hampshire. And George Washington, the fucking president of the United States and leader of the military, was looking for this one woman with a um with a with an agent. And then New Hampshire wouldn't give up. They were like, nah, you free here. And then so they kept trying to, over the span of like years, were trying to convince her to come back. Like, I don't know if they was writing her letters. (laughs) <laughs> oh, what the it? fuck they, they was doing <laughs> but like yo come back come back to slavery now oh. like yo that it's shit better is... now baby we got good food <laughs> <laughs> sending telegrams we have another telegram for you man <laughs> like tell them I'm not coming back <laughs> god damn but it's but it's like yo any any and I, I just think about that in a sense of any aspect of our freedom whether it's your voice whether it's your body whether mm-hmm. whatever it is they always gonna try to stop it because as long as long as we are kept in a place, the rest of this shit works the way it's supposed to work. This shit ain't supposed to work with our freedom. Yeah. Let me, since we're talking about the similarities and differences and learning that there, I mean, it sounds like the only thing that's different is you keep your clothes on when you're in front of the camera and we don't. So far, <laughs> so far that's all that's, I got. <laughs> but it's still in the spirit of entertaining strangers. It, entertaining yep. strangers. While also getting something out of it cathartic for yourself mm-hmm. to a degree. So if we could switch up for a day and you were a master fetish trainer and we were some form of comedic entertainers, what style of comedy would you choose (laughs) and what fetish would you be the specialist on? A master fetish trainer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is phone sex a fetish? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. then that's my lane. Okay, that's your lane. What would your description kind of be like? Help walk me into the <laughs> like, yeah. girl six months. Yeah, come on. Wait, what, no. what is Yo, your night alert? Think I'm still trying to host a TV show at some point. Well, <laughs> well I mean, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe that's it. Show us how you know boring your phone sex line would be. Maybe. No, my phone sex is not boring. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's just start right there. Right there. Man, like, mm-hmm. don't see. You see, she's doing the psychology. Mm-hmm. She disrespect me to get me to prove myself. <laughs> And then, and then when I try to host some late night shit next year, then they be like, "Hey, nigga, we saw a clip of you <laughs> <laughs> talking about wanting to get talking about you know." <laughs> 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 Only go where you're comfortable. Wait, what am I doing? Am I showing people how to have phone sex? No, no. Just what would your like? Give us an advertisement for what your phone sex line would say. Like you know when you when like you clicking around, on, on oh, BT. like if I was making like, like a, you know he's sultry from. Oh, Alabama. like if I was making like an Instagram ad for this, yeah, yeah, hey, your bio. Let me. Hey, what's going on, fellas? It's your boy Roy Wood Jr. If you ain't got the gift of gab on the phone, you ain't gonna get the draws. So do what you can and pay for my online course. It is a master class on flirting via text. And over the phone, if you're dealing with an old chick who still take phone calls. <laughs> Get him a sex panther right now. Right now, right Get now. Get him a sex panther. Sign me up. No, I, yeah. Yeah, you, you know why phone sex? Because I travel so much. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would imagine that that probably became a thing for me in my 20s 
when you're just traveling, you're just away. Yeah. Man, I sure wish I was there. What would you do if I was there? <laughs> Girl, you know I would take them. And then you have to paint mm-hmm. a picture. Right. And mm-hmm. then at that point, my degree is in broadcast. Okay. So at that point, it's literally the colors, the smell. You have to, it's journalistic. It is. What did you see? Mm-hmm. Who was there? What happened? What did it sound like? Yeah. What did it smell like? Like that level of descriptiveness Perfect. so that yeah. always wins that's what that's what people always tell us the descriptions for y'all scenes are so are so graphic and detailed and it's the same thing you smell it if you could taste it if you could feel it and you in that moment then you people are like i gotta watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> look at those transferable skills yep. though from journalism into sex work that's dead on that is spot all right on. i got my fallback i got my fallback career set up already there you go in um, case this shit don't work out it. <laughs> you know low-key everybody that i know in your industry is either I don't want to say funny, but they have comedic timing. Mm-hmm. I could see like, that. Like, there's a performance aspect. Like, I've never seen a porn comedy, per se. I've seen porns that were unintentionally funny. <laughs> a whole lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> see a lot of that. But, no, like, there's just, like, you two, you two could do some sort of, like, chemistry-type two-person show. Oh, shit, gas yeah. yeah, he in my manifestation journal over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what type of comedy? You, you want to go first? Oh, I'll be happy to. I've been told that I could do um, improv comedy well. I've never tried That's fair. it. You're, you're quick as fuck. I think of, and this isn't just because we are on the same website and partners and shit, but like doing scenes with you both on camera and like working with, you know, like clients in person, mm-hmm. you be pulling some shit out of nowhere, I'd be like, I'd be stuck. I'd be like, where did she even get that from? And like, you can run with it. You you have a good memory also, so you can like pick up on what you know what to ask people to get to draw the things out. And I feel like in like in like improv and shit, mm-hmm. you know, they, I've been to some improv shows where they're like pulling things from the crowd. Yeah. And All if they right. could go back to that person that said that shit in the mm-hmm. crowd, people are like, oh shit, it's like like a freestyle. Yeah, shit. you call back. How much? How much? of a scene is improv versus you know all right I'm gonna do doggy and then we'll do missionary and then mm. we'll put your leg up on the thing and then Depends we go on, on reverse the camera with. yeah i've worked for some other like not taking royal fetish out of it other companies i work with they are very that shit is shotless like to the shotless t, mm-hmm. to the t and then the, the the reason I would say that you do see a lot of porn where it's like it's funny when it's not supposed to be funny. One, just because you do porn and you can fuck good doesn't particularly mean that you're an actor. Just like there's a lot of comedians that are hilarious on stage, but they don't translate on film. Mm-hmm. So like some of us, we get our scripts like fucking day of. <laughs> be like, you know what I'm saying? You're a construction worker. Here are your lines. And you be like, yo, I just got here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you should have sent me this like two yeah. weeks ago. Or some, you know, so a lot of times people who might not even be actors or they might not be comfortable, they might be good at acting, but they can't deliver lines because they need to memorize or whatever. So like that shit. And then there's some companies that you got to do the exact positions that they're asking. Like we need reverse cowgirl. We need this. We need this. We need this for this amount of minutes. With us, we might, we do more of a framework. Yeah. Like this is what it's about if we're going to do something that's outside of reality. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then that leaves more room for people like, you're not a talker, then shut the fuck up and do what you can do. You are a talker, feel free, knock the shit out. Yeah, that's about right. Because that should be whacking your real life if you were like, all right, we're going to fuck in these four positions <laughs> <laughs> but you for can this tell. amount of time. I've and dated people like that. I was going to say, I, in real life, you can tell who watches that porn template because they, they fuck in that order. And it's very, it's oh, very telling. Oh, shit. Yeah, you might. Yeah, switch it up. Switch it up. Let me think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, it's about time for the reverse cowgirl yeah. right now. Blow job. Yeah. Eat you out. Yeah. Doggy style. Mm-hmm. And then get on top. No, get on top. Missionary no, first. Yeah, missionary and first. Then, then doggy, doggy style. Yeah, finish and doggy. Or you might finish on face. On, on face but yeah, if you just go straight blow Or on the breast. If you're, you could tell if, you're, uh, if you watch ass, breast, or facial cum porn. But that, just that's off the of that, yeah, that's the template. My ex had it. Holy fuck, you're right. Yeah. I'm like going through my head, <laughs> and now. then y'all be passing it around. 
<laughs> we know. And then and, and we got our timing. That's why we can fake our orgasms so well because we know it's coming. All right, here you go. Split me over, facial. <gasps> done and like it's it's wild because then you can like essentially tell who's been watching what just off of how they Mm -hmm. move in the bedroom Mm -hmm. that's why it's good to watch like you know indie or independent filmmaker porn because it'll give you inspiration outside of that that template you know it's like a sitcom right kind of thinking about like comedy sitcoms how you you kind of know what's going to happen no matter what show it is you know yeah. how it's going to end and then just, you see a show like Atlanta that just doesn't fucks follow you up. yeah that show yeah we we'll talk about that in the last joke. wait <laughs> but then is so then to the improv point then mm-hmm. some of the dialogue then has to be improv because if you have mm-hmm. a scene partner that's doing some different shit then you have to acknowledge yeah. What the fuck? Oh, you had to take my leg like that? Oh, you just gonna take the leg. Okay. <laughs> like, because we actually we do a lot of scenes with people who wanna try something for the first time. Yeah. So there are other performers in our industry, but they're like, yo, I've never been, I've never done hot wax, or I've never been flogged, or I've never been sounded, or I've never been like just run down the list. Yeah. So it's like, you can't really if we write something, they're gonna be up there like, I don't know how I feel about this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we want the natural We're reaction. We're just going to take them out of the scene anyway. Exactly. It's like, yo, be yourself unless you're a person that's into role play. If you into role play, we could rock with some role play. And I think for me, when we started doing Royal Fetish, that was one of the things that was so important because I had done a lot of studio porn where it was just like, I'll be on set like, and this is before eating pussy was part of the order. Routine. And be like, <laughs> She just gave me head for like 15 minutes. I, I feel like I, I I should eat her pussy also, not just because I want to, but like it's only right. You know what I'm saying? But like before it would be on some like, no, it's not in the script. Like what? <laughs> that don't even make sense. And that's why so many people now, yeah. like I don't eat pussy then because I ain't see it in the movie. I ain't, I ain't doing it so or, they didn't, or whatever. And that's you know what the saying? origins of you don't do that, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't do it because I ain't seen it in the movie or or just in the sense of like, being connected with somebody and being turned on by somebody, you do want to sh- do shit that pleases them. Why would you not have that in a scene? That yeah. don't make no sense. So we want things that'll go organically in that kind of way. What comedy style for you? I love stand up. Yeah? That's what you, you switch it for a day? You gonna do If it? I switch for a day, I would want to try stand up. Okay. All right. I think that's the hardest form of entertainment. Because every mm-hmm. other type of entertainment, you could pick one thing about some shit. Where you're like, oh man, like I ain't like that beat, but dude got flow. Mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? She might not have looked good, but oh, she sucked dick like a motherfucker in that scene. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like you can always kind of pick out one thing and stand up to and me, either they make you laugh or they don't. To me, comedy is one of the hardest performance art forms because it's it's the one that everybody has done even if it's on accident. Hmm. At some point in your life, you've been funny. You've said something and people laughed. And now you think you can do it professionally. So the moment you see a joke <laughs> on TV, hey, funny. <laughs> I know funny. Do you, do you nigga? Do you really? Do you really know fu- you may not like that joke, but that doesn't mean you know funny. That just means that mm-hmm. joke did not connect with you. So... I think mm-hmm. that's probably the biggest thing is that I think comedy gets critiqued so fucking hard because everybody, they I know a little funny. It. I've seen funny. I've done research. Like, I know what it is. Like, it's not like, you you know you can't dance. I know I can't rap. So I can go, yeah, I didn't like that rapper. But it's not to the point of, well, I should also be a rapper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It never, it never oh, gets to that point. Porn is like that, though. Yeah. It, most people have fucked. I won't say everybody has fucked. But most people have fucked and most people will look at that porn and think, I could do that shit. That shit is easy. I have been able to have sex before. <laughs> <laughs> I too you know can take the leg and move the leg and do the thing. <laughs> but yo, you get some people, yo, can you do that shit in front of all these lights? In can you do that shit of all these people? At the exact time, not when after you went out for dinner in a movie a and got to know somebody, <laughs> had a couple drinks, found out y'all was feeling each other, da 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 No. You got to be there at 9. You have to fucking 9.30. Can you do that? 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It don't matter that, it don't, that you don't know, that you probably don't even like, that <laughs> you had the worst fucking day before you got there. Yeah. All these things lining up. But can you do that shit? Turn and it then, on. And then it's, it's the same kind of thing. And I also think. don't bust too soon. Nope. No matter how good she look, how good she do that shit, you cannot bust. <laughs> Until they are like, we are ready for the money shot. And then you actually have to do that money shot within the frame of time, usually, that they are asking you to do that money shot. Yeah. they like, we, we can't just wait around for you to fuck all day and finish. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got other <laughs> scenes to shoot or got places to go. And they talking to you about non-sexy shit while you there fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, in between setups. In between and... setups. Or you got to hold a position that's uncomfortable for you. Or I run down the list. Or for same thing. A lot of women... That are might they might be like, yo, we need you to fuck this guy that nobody is attracted to, but he happens to be your male talent for the day. Can you make it look like other people should want to fuck him? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, God, but everybody think they could do that shit. Yeah. But I but I feel you. Like I, I do think like it's be, watching people who are really good at comedy, you'll be like, how, how did you think of that shit? That's People, amazing. Like just like I, I think like musicians who could put a song together that is common, like a common thing that we might all think of. Everybody think they can make. You think you can make a party song? You like to go to a party? <laughs> nah, fucking corny. That shit goes. Oh, <laughs> we did. We did a rap. I think year one. Trump was still. He wasn't even the nominee yet. Um. <sighs> <laughs> it was still it was still Republican primary. Okay. And me and one of the writers had an idea to because Trump was just always bragging and talking shit and all this stuff. And I was like, man, that motherfucker be bragging like a rapper. And then we looked at some of the lines of some of his quotes and I was like, that's shit rappers say. I got a jet, I ain't got money. <laughs> I was like, I bet you if we could find enough Trump quotes. Mm -hmm. We can make a rap song comprised of nothing but shit he's actually said. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we spent a week just going through transcripts of just anything he said anywhere on earth. And we made bars, made a hook. We went out, um, went out to Long Island to this Batman, Bruce Wayne looking ass mansion. And we shot a whole ass, I shot a whole ass video as Trump rapping Trump quotes. <laughs> and let me tell you something, Nate. I've never been more exhausted <laughs> and <laughs> oxygen deprived in my fucking life than rapping a song while walking. I went <laughs> running. <laughs> I'm just walking. Like, if you watch the Black Trump, it's still on YouTube. You watch this Black Trump video. I'm like, well, there's a setup where I'm just walking around a golf cart while a camera goes the opposite way and constantly <laughs> passes me. And my only function in life for an hour and a half is to just fucking walk and rap and make it believe. And I'm trying to mime, mm -hmm. but you can't, you gotta actually say it. <laughs> you gotta say it. Mm -hmm. That shit is fucking unreal. And this ain't even like some Janet, ja I've seen Janet Jackson live, who I will argue, and I've only because I haven't seen Beyonce live, but I watched Janet Jackson in Vegas, goddamn two hours of fucking Routines, nigga, <laughs> and singing. Mm -hmm. Didn't miss a syllable. Did, nigga never panicked. Like she ain't finished a song. Go, <laughs> none of that. Janet Jackson was killed. My fucking ass can't do two laps around a golf cart <laughs> while a fucking steady cam. The level of performance, mm -hmm. like that. That's the thing that I really get obsessed with. You know, because comedy is different in that, you know, it's also one of the few genres that is created in front of the consumer and the consumer criticizes it, not realizing, not knowing where this joke is in its particular life cycle. So right. that's that's also part of the problem now with phones at the shows and stuff like that is that people jump on something and comedians need the leeway to be wrong a couple of shows mm -hmm. so you can see where the line is and then bring it back. And then that's what you take and present on television. That used to be the timeline of a performance. But now 
every single show, your shit's on the line because you have to be, which I think makes your writing tighter, Mm -hmm. but it still doesn't always change the risk. Like, I wish that there was more ways for comedians. And, you know, they bag phones at certain shows and Mm -hmm. stuff, so you're able to you're able to come up with ways to do stuff in a bubble where people don't notice. But I just really wish that there was a way to like really rehearse sometimes because like I'll walk down the street and the only thing I rehearse is tempo of a joke and inflection. But that's not until I have the verbiage. Like like if I'm shooting an hour special, it may take a year and a half to two years to zero in on what the 60 minutes is. But in that last six months when I know what the joke is and I've said it a bunch of different ways and I've listened to the audio and I know exactly, okay, this sentence is funnier after this sentence, but this word is funnier than this word. Mm. You go on thesaurus.com, you find synonyms. Is there a funnier word? Is there a word funnier than this word that I'm using to say this thing? Plug that word, commit that to memory, and then play around with it on stage a little bit. I saw... um, I hosted Essence Festival one year and I wish that everybody, like just the general public, I wish that the general public could receive the gift of watching their favorite artists rehearse Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. and understanding what it takes to put what you see. I fucking watch Solange Knowles for it was like two hours it was a two-hour rehearsal for what was ultimately a 20-minute performance wow. just 20 minutes mm-hmm. and as a comedian he said, oh, 20 minutes man i'll go over my jokes in the green room solange was out that bitch at 10 in the morning i need you to stand here mm-hmm. move you move that way okay you two come up a little bit now we'll do the song do half a verse stop you when we get to this part wow. over here and then you back this way and you come on the front like precision fucking Mary J. Blige same shit y'all think Mary J. Blige should be up there fucking around doing all them stuff you <laughs> practice that <laughs> yes you do that shit is fucking science mm-hmm. bro that's why was, we that's why we love it and, and yeah. you know it's a part of Ooh, that's another part what's that Mary, Mary. Yeah, you have a crush on Mary you just you just don't like Sade I like Sade. I just don't like your crush on Sade. Because <laughs> that one's real. <laughs> no, you know, can, should we talk about it? Have we Wait, but, but before it? before ahead. we do that, Go I do, ahead. I do, we when we talk this. about this, um, <laughs> with what you were saying about live, I think about the sex work aspect of that with strippers mm-hmm. um, and dancers and also cam models. Oh my because goodness. Because cam models, <laughs> that I know some Ooh. cam models who will be like, I just got this new dildo and I'm gonna try it live for y'all tonight. Let's go. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like that's one of those. I mean, if it don't go right, and people are, can be very, very judgmental and say wild shit. Not even can to, be. They do be. Yeah, they do. They be. do. Be. They do be. They and especially then with watch. the cam girls, right? Yeah. yeah. They'll so watch like, but it. but mm-hmm. I do. But just saying, like, there are some yeah. of them who will try out certain shit. Mm-hmm. Like in that moment, like they are like, I am trying to do X, Y, and Z for the first time because that's how you pull more clients. Yeah. And here's the thing though, how you were talking about people actually, like you're basically rehearsing live. At least you know that they paid already. Like you, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you're doing it for Cam, like you might not even try to do it the first time. You might have tried it alone. Like, okay, like it feels good. I hope people like it, right? But you don't know if they like it until you see them tips coming through or not. Yeah. And it's like, damn, like I did all of this and And they trying to get you to do more with it. They was like, Yeah, yeah. look great in your pussy, but put it in your ass though. Uh-huh. And and get the other one that you used last week. <laughs> it's like Get it a friend. Double DP in yourself. <laughs> yeah. And you asking for the money at the same time? Like how you talking about walking around and rapping? So you gotta ride this dildo and beg for money? That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Fuck, that is similar. I, I was talking with uh I don't know if she's retired yet, so I don't know. I know she was talking about getting out the game. Uh, but this girl, Hurricane Fury, and she does this, um, she does squirt videos. You get them girl Hurricane. Fridays. So she was telling me how when she had started, and she said this on my podcast, on 
because I know my mama watching this right now. She's like, why are you talking to the young lady? Don't worry about that, mama. Mama, you shouldn't even be watching this shit, mama. No, watch. This is good. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> but um, Hurricane was telling me that she had started out just doing dildo play on mm-hmm. herself on camera. And then on one random day, just started squirting. Mm-hmm. Don't know where it came from. Don't know where it happened. And then that became her thing. And that's how she built all of her bread and transitioned over to Twitch. But like... Mm-hmm. You have to ideate. You have to create because that's what happens on stage. Yeah. You just yeah, I'm just fucking around. And, oh shit! A brilliant joke just came out my mouth. Mm-hmm. But don't let that body change again, and it don't squirt no more. Then with the fine. <laughs> and so you know, it's about figuring out ways to re- yeah. to recreate that and connect with the audience. But yeah, that's I've met. Oddly enough, like I've gone to strip clubs, but I like. As a stage performer, when you see another stage performer, you can just look in the eyes and that nigga thinking about groceries. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not eggs. <laughs> yeah, like you can just. Mm-hmm. T- I, I don't know. There, there's just been such a synergy with with strippers that I've just never really gone to. Like it's never been my first. It's a lot of food. I go to strip clubs for food, but like there's a lot of strip clubs. I'm like, yeah, I got I gotta get a lap dance. I'm like, nah. If you ever see me in a strip club, I'm with a bunch of other people who really wanted to be in the strip mm-hmm. club. So we Or on we a was, date with somebody that wanted to go to a strip club. We established that you have watched some porn here and there, maybe. Oh no, but, I did. I'm, I'm not just, gonna I'm do just it. fucking <laughs> with you. We, 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 that was research purposes and shit. But like so is there any sex workers that you have like, from any any walk of sex sex work life that you have, like, come in contact with or you just like, that's my shit? I, I don't know. I've met them all on such a human level mm-hmm. that it was never really, like, eww. It's just mm-hmm. like, like, I worked at the subway. Shout out to Birmingham, to the Pickwick subway. It's gone now, but... So Birmingham Five Point South at the time in the nineties, that was that was the counterculture side of town. So that was nose rings, tattoo shops, okay. one the one or two gay bars that might have been in the city of Birmingham, but weren't even openly gay bars. It was just bars where gay people be mm-hmm. type era mm-hmm. of society. So, you know, if you weren't closing shift on a Friday night in Five Point South, you saw every single type of person okay. that because it, it was the bar district. So you saw Everything, and you know, from from unhoused people all the way sex workers, like drunk businessmen, all of that. So you would meet women in like over the course of a year, and I'm like 16 working this, and you come in every Friday night around 2:30, and like knowing what I know now, oh shit, you was taking a break. This is when you come take a break <laughs> and have your sandwich. Yeah, I ain't talking about shit out there tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a good night tonight. But it was just always just conversation. Yeah. Like, it was never, oh, that's what you do. Like, you put two and two together after a while, but it was just never, I don't know, it was just never a thing. And then I remember when I was in, I stayed in Elizabeth, New Jersey, dog. At the, mm-hmm. We at the out there, right? at the fucking night's in. I actually used to be a driver out there, hmm. but that's another story. <laughs> I was in Elizabeth, New Jersey, at the night's in, and I was coming to do Showtime at the Apollo uh, comedy TKO, and I, I, I won't name the other brother, but <laughs> but we decide to share a room. What well, now? Henry Coleman is another funny comic out of L.A. Okay. He's from Memphis, but so Henry and I like share a room, and it's like thirty dollars a night just to give you the perspective of the type of situation. Oh yeah, one and nine. So we're not, we're not really we like. There's no Yelp in O two. <laughs> you know, there was Travelocity. You know, I don't even think Expedia was popping it like. But there was no reviews. It was just, hey, nigga, it's a hotel. You want to stay there? $30? You want to stay? It was like, fucking bet. Me and Henry Coleman, we get to the night's end. When we pull up, and it's one of them U-shaped joints, the motel with one way in, one way out. Mm -hmm. And just at the front, it's just sex workers and dope boys. And they just chilling. Like, they not fucking with nobody, but they just chilling. And I'm like, God damn, I can't believe this. This is what I got to fucking do. 
so it's two nights before we're performing at the Apollo, and the room is as tight as you would expect a $30 hotel to be. So ain't no space for niggas to move. So <laughs> I'm going to go outside and work on my jokes. And so because when you're doing television, TV is a little different from live. Like It's like what you're talking about with those white porn productions with this and this mm-hmm. and this. You have two minutes and 30 seconds. And if you do 231, we're fucking cutting your microphone or we're going to edit your whole joke. So mm. you have to be precise down to the fucking commas and the semicolons with your jokes. So it is literally an Easter speech, basically. So I'm going to go outside and memorize my Easter speech. And then that's what we were going out into the clubs each night leading up to the Apollo to work on our set or whatever. And so I'd be outside talking to myself and shit, and I'm watching. I'm watching money move in the parking lot. I ain't saying shit to nobody. And on the night we were supposed to go to the Apollo, uh, one of the women came up to me, and she's like, you know, what the fuck you niggas doing? That? <laughs> like, Shout the police. Like, she started oh. like, like, nah, why the fuck would you think the police? You ain't bought no dope. You ain't bought no pussy. Mm. And you niggas just been, been outside all up in our business. And I'm like, no. Let me explain. And so he explained, mm-hmm. hey, we, mm-hmm. we comedians. And, you know, and they're like, oh. And like a fucking switch, this lady just starts naming her favorite comedians and who she like and all of this. And and it, it, we're like, I'm 21, 22 at the time. And just giving us all of the fucking, you can do it and go do it. <laughs> and, and the Apollo and... I, and she's rattling off names of motherfuckers she's seen at the Apollo and how historic the Apollo is and just fucking hyped us up. Just fucking <laughs> me and Henry Coleman hop in the car, we ride out to Harlem, we get booed. Oh, <laughs> we <shit. laughs> get booed mercilessly. Damn. That's the game. Mm-hmm. But when we come back to the fucking night's end, and as we pull back into the fucking parking lot, that fucking woman and two of her friends are standing there clapping for us. Aww. And that's the most, <laughs> fuck, like, at your lowest low, mm. to just have a random person mm-hmm. just, hey, it's all right. Like, she looked through the car, like, she didn't see the We've been crying the whole ride. <laughs> <laughs> Because we was counting on that money, nigga. Fuck. <laughs> we was counting on Because, like, because I was like, I'm going to do that. Like, I had the whole shit in my head. I'm like, nigga, I'm going to do the Apollo. And then I'm going to do Comic View. Then I'm going to do <laughs> Def Jam. Then Ice Cube going to put me in a Friday movie. <laughs> that was my, that was Good how track. I thought my career was going to go at that time. Was Apollo, BT, Def Jam, Ice Cube. <laughs> I got booed. I was like, "Fuck!" Just what's skipped next? over the, the Shaq um, comedy. Tour Shaq All Star wasn't a thing yet. Not not yet. Not yet. Shaq All Star came like oh five, oh six, somewhere in there. So at that point, like, like it was just the warmest fucking just what's up? just a polite, just a kind motherfucker, man. I don't think that. I think that there's definitely a stigma on sex work because of religion. Mm-hmm. in this country but I also think that within that industry and you can correct me if I'm wrong but I feel like a lot of people who want to do it this is what I want to do operate from a degree of secrecy for fear of shame or they don't talk about it you know because it seems like in y'all's industry there's people that are loud and proud about it like if you look at OnlyFans right yeah. where yes I have an OnlyFans Please subscribe to my OnlyFans. I want you to know I have an OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And then there's niggas on OnlyFans who don't show they, you can't see their head, you can't see, mm-hmm. not, they don't want you to know nothing about yeah. them. I think it's even it's more of like fear of you, not you, but other people's shame. Like other people's shame that they look at sex work or like 
how we were talking about just the safety. It's like if you know stalkers too. Yeah, I guess. like if you know my face or like because other people around me have shame around sex, it's gonna have negative consequences towards me. Now that's not to say some people do sex work for to survive. You know, this is not what they plan on doing for the long haul and they don't wanna like have this um the stigma attached to them for the you know forever. Also, it be people's fetishes to like to engage with people that you can't see their face or that they only want to see your feet and things like that. So, yeah. or like maybe you're just ugly and like you know what your best parts <laughs> are too. That's like I mean that's the cool thing about the objectification in sex work is that if something don't work up here or you could focus on focus on what does work. Yeah, just find your one good body part. Somebody jacking off to that the body fuck part. Out of it. <laughs> Work. Get on knees dot x x. <laughs> <laughs> There's some. There is. There is a body part that somebody is obsessing over at all times. Underarms. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the what's an area of your body that you're just like, like your fans love that you could care less to show. This hard for you, I know. I, I, I show it all. <laughs> I have no. I have no problem with it. I, I, I think. When I do find people who have fetishes for different body parts, mm-hmm. then I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. now how can I how can I highlight that shit though? Because mm-hmm. it's like if someone's just like like how you said, someone's just like, I need a kneecap shot, like a kneecap shot. Mm-hmm. All right, how do you get the right angle so that the <laughs> kneecap looks sexy? But then you realize like when it comes to fetishes, people are so specific of their fetish, they'll let you know. Like someone who's into feet, if they're like, no, I want to see the bottoms of your feet. Like dirty, this mm-hmm. angle, mm-hmm. <laughs> or somebody else would be like, "I know, I need the tops of your feet, bright light, right after you took your shoes off." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're super specific. Like that part I like about it. Yeah. What about you? Um, people, I, I've had someone with underarm fetish, mm-hmm. and shaved or hairy. Um, so both. Some people that I've had want to see my underarms bare. Some want to smell like they they buy my shirts. Oh, yeah. I that I slept in for a while, and that's like it's. I'll I'll sell it because I like to make the money, but it does feel like like oh man, you want to smell that for? Yeah, I met a penny seller. We had her mm-hmm. on my uh, job podcast one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother level. But the panties, like I could get with. I I I guess because I could attach the sexual part to it, but it's you know, it's just not my kink to be up under my arms, and then some with hair, which I can never grow it out long enough. To really make that kind of money. To go like the 70s Wolfman, Pam yeah. Greer. During the pandemic, I got real close. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put no extensions in the underarms. <laughs> I could. You, you're right. Some, some, I could. Some underarm some weave. Silky. I could. But I just, <laughs> I mean, but the shirt shit I get, that's no different than women wanting to wear their boyfriend's hoodie and shit like that. You just want yeah. the scent. Yeah, that's of the true. person. But that's also, true. I mean, for people who like sweat, sometimes it's yeah. it's the... What were you doing that you built up that sweat? Yeah. Or some people sweat a lot during sex, right. so they like that kind of smell. Or I just be like, for real? I mean, but okay. And then I send it. <laughs> uh, okay. Here's your yeah, money. Okay. You got the money? Yeah, I send it. They like it. So no, nah, comedy don't... ain't got nothing like that. That's not true. I think you could sell your drawers after a show. No. I do. You want to try it? I tried to sell my sneakers as an NFT. Them niggas was like, no. But that's because it was attached to the NFT part. Yeah, probably so. This yeah. is before I knew it was all crooked shit. With that. Yeah, that's what NFT stands for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Well, no, you could, I I have a lot that's of sneakerhead. Nice. <laughs> I got a lot of sneakerhead fans now. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's like just mm-hmm. built built up over time, and I used to not really be in the kicks like that. I was a Timberlands, and I wear sneakers if I'm balling. That's it. But now that I've understood, like, yo, I have certain fans that only want to see me fuck in Jordans. Mm. Yeah. Or certain fans like like these. With the like, socks I'm, on. They're into, into, like, these kind of boots. Sent me a whole bunch of these boots. Like, <laughs> could you wear these in your next scenes? Here's some boots. We want you to go Here's to work. Here's some bread. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, and it got me even, like, now all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, no, I prefer some, like, LeBron 15s. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, now I'm all of a sudden a sneaker. Yeah. I just know shit about it. You know, y'all. so you could you could do it. It's just you. I, I feel like because I've been checking, like in, in your in your stand up joints, you be having some fresh 
some fresh, uh, some fresh shit. Th- so the sneakerheads are out there. Now, if they know, like, oh, shit, I could get them Roy Wood Juniors from the from this <laughs> from this joint. You know what I'm saying? Yo, There'll people be, be into that shit. There'll never be another pair of those. Yeah. Yup. Well, there are definitely another pair of these LeBron 15 Kith King cloaks, and you can shoot me a DM if you want to buy them. No, hey. no, shoot me the DM, and I'll make the deal. Now, okay, don't just jump into my industry. Okay, respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> respectfully. Hit jazz. Okay. And then send the message you. back to me. Do y'all get product placement? I don't imagine no real corporation wants to be anywhere in this. <clears throat> but <clears throat> you say talk about this <laughs> black owned business <laughs> right there. That's, right. that's just sitting up here right now. You know uh, we, I mean, we do, we do for scenes um, yeah. because there are certain products that, you know, people might not be like, yo, let me try to get lube into this. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. Into like, this uh, Disney stuff movie. That's, uh, you know what I'm saying? Industry. So they going to holler at us. So we, we Particular definitely do. dildo. Like, I tell you what was wild about mm-hmm. your industry. With it. That I didn't know, and like I can't even remember when I found it out. But I was sitting there, mouth open, and they was like, "Yeah, they do dick and coochie molds, and you can just take 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 his dick home with you." It's like, mm-hmm. like you can take ours home. We have we have both. <laughs> I mean, you know, like when I found that out, I was like, "Oh fuck, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. That's fucking brilliant." They was like, "Oh yeah," and then they make it with the silicone, and it feel real, and nigga, mm-hmm. the skin tone of it. It's, it's like, yeah. I was like, "Oh shit." It, Porn industry ain't fucking around. It ain't. Make no. sure that you go to <laughs> jetsettingjasmine.com or luststarts.com. Get the Kingdom Wall dildo, the Jet Setting Jasmine Garden. Yes, and penetrate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we got some Christmas gifts coming for you. So, um, yeah, but I mean, when you think about it, it's like the the clicks on, on porn, are, they're like astronomical. And people... And you can't get advertisement, like uh, advertisement placement on regular, you know, like yeah, and lower know, thirds and Google ads and all mm-hmm. that shit. Yeah. They're not gonna p- pick it up, and then we could actually like show using it the the actual product the way that like Walgreens can say like yo we have what do they say like personal lubricant right but we could actually show like personal lubricant see it works that type personally of thing. yeah certain sexy clothes like all kinds of products even you know when you're thinking about like we be doing porn in the kitchen in the bedroom at the pool and all these different places and then we start, were able to show our sponsors like. Millions of people who you may not have, like, their emails and that type of thing. But we can show you their demographics, where they live, how long they spend online, all of that stuff. Yeah, I, I, yeah but I, I guess a lot of that for your industry, unfortunately, just boils down to corporations also being bullied by people that are rooted in it. So it all comes back to religion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It really does. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the part that's unfortunate. I think with stand-up, you can, if you have a good enough social media presence... You can get some you can get some plugs, you can make a little bit of money. But more often than not, they tend to just pull you into something national, you know, or mm-hmm. just take you from your world and add you to theirs. Okay. You know, like I'd say the best example as of recent, um is a, f- is a funny fucking brother, uh, named Drewski. And so Drewski like I won't even try to explain what he does online. You just got to go see that shit. Mm-hmm. But then you'll turn on the television. This thing will be in a national commercial. Mm. And I'm like, fucking good for him. Like, that's fucking dope. Because you're able to build your brand on your own mm-hmm. and then have national brands come in and try to, you know, fucking be a part of your fucking wave. And that's all self-made. Like, you know, I love watching, you know, these youngins, you know, to a degree, you know, I was looking at Snapchat for a while because what I what I find fascinating about your industry is that also your industry usually dictates how tech moves. Mm-hmm. And if you can make people horny or you can make them laugh, then you win. Yep. So anywhere people are being made horny, figure out a way to go there and be funny mm-hmm. and you win. I have been trying. I'll tell you something funny that I've done from time to time while watching porn is play the game called Guess the Stand-Up Comedian that's playing in the background. (laughs) 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 Yo, you would be surprised how many regular folks out there are just fucking 
with just Netflix specials on in the background. <laughs> <That's funny>. Like <laughs> Lil Rail Dio. Yo, I almost, <laughs> I almost, <laughs> I had that to, phone sex voice thing. I was gonna say that Yo. he would be good. At, he would be good for for our porny Yoki. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Yo, I had to stop myself from texting Lil Rail one night. <laughs> this nigga popped up in the background of a poor. I was like, "Hey man, they watching your spec." I probably shouldn't send them that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you should. No, we, no, we got to normalize no. porn. Well, but do I send him a? Yeah. Hey, man, I was watching this yeah. porn. Yeah. And you came up in the background. Not sure if you want to say hello to your fans or not. Yeah, you should. Yes, just like that. And you know, the cool thing is that you could actually instead of sending the porn, you could just send this clip, and then. You know, then we're, yeah. yeah. I, but, but it normalizes porn when we actually talk about watching it. It's to the point now, though, where now, like, I'm in the background, and like, if I see people watching, if I see people fucking in this comedy on the background, I want to message them. Have you seen my latest special <laughs> in Perfect Messenger? It's perfect for fucking. <laughs> it's socio... <laughs> it's socio-aware comedy. Do you want to fuck while I talk about the national anthem and police reform? <laughs> Socio-political porn. You, so you haven't, you haven't come across, none of, no pun, come across any of your own drones? No, because my shit was on the Comedy Central app for years and nobody was going to fuck to the Comedy Central app. But now, <laughs> now, but, now that we, but now that we have Paramount Plus, <laughs> yeah, <they will. laughs> my shit easier to find. You weren't going to find my shit in 17. It was too hard to find. That's funny. I didn't know that. Yeah, people be fucking with all types of weird shit on in the background. We That's, we ain't trying to get our our shit shut down, so we we keep everybody's copywritten material out of our out of our porn. But if you wanna if you wanna throw a couple jokes, we'll put something in the back. We'll put it on mute. We'll put, we can put this in the background of that shit. Now. <laughs> I, I, you know what? <laughs> do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shoot a I'm gonna shoot a special I'm gonna shoot some special porn footage, porn stand up special. I'm gonna just do like an hour of just jokes, and then y'all just said it just just for y'all to have. You know what? That actually, uh, one of the things that we wanted to ask you is like, since you're known for your political, your socio uh, political comedy, do people get put off, or do you feel like box into to that? And like, when you want to do something like silly or expand your range, is it difficult? A little bit from a cat. <laughs> Sorry. Bless Bless. You. Thank you. Most of the roles that I book. In sitcoms, I'm wearing a suit mm -hmm. because I wear a suit for The Daily Show. Mm -hmm. And most of the casting people know me from The Daily Show. So this character has a suit. Well, you know, it looks good in a suit. Why would you get him in? And I book him. I book him. We were just talking about uh, Flatbush misdemeanors before we sat down. I was a principal. He wore a suit. I was in Confess Fletch with John Hamm. I was a detective. Wore a suit. I was in Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a public defender. I wore a suit. I was in Space Force with Steve Carell, fucking suit. So it's like, and I'm not, hey, no, hey, keep yeah. giving me the suit, buddy. Look good in the suit. <laughs> but yeah. it's important that I start doing different stuff outside of the Daily Show mm -hmm. so people can right. see me as something a little different. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's a typecastishness, it's that. But in terms of my actual stand up, People come and low key they get disappointed that I'm not going harder mm. at a lot of what's going on in the world. You know, to me, a lot of my stand up is just all the shit they're not gonna let me talk about on the show, or I just don't have the runway to really get into the way I want to right. on the show. But you know, my next run of stand up specials for me as it stands right now, it's all gonna be about fatherhood. I don't give a fuck about like. I did three one-hour specials talking about everything that's wrong in the world. And there are plenty of other comedians that are out there doing that as well and doing it very well. So I'm going to take a detour and talk about me for a minute. I'll get back to all the crisis of the world in a minute. But I just want to talk about, you know, my relationship with my son, my relationship with my father, mm -hmm. or the rockiness of what it was as it informs. To me, that's more interesting. Yeah. That's more, that's, that's this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, to me, that's more of that. 
how was I raised and how is it informing how I'm going to raise my son? Yes. And starting from that question, I think from that question alone, I got two hour specials in me, probably a one person show. So if that ain't what you want to see, it's cool. You got to come see me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with that, but I cannot be the guy, especially if I'm still at the daily show. I do that at work. Right. My day job is I, I, I work a job even now with Trevor Noah gone. I'm still at a building where if I walk in the room today and go, Hey, you know what? I want to take some cameras down to Selma, Alabama and talk about the sewage systems and how fucked up the water is down in the, in the black belt of Alabama. I got people who go bet. Here's your camera. Here's your playing ticket. Go do that. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to get on stage and talk about Selma. I'd rather talk about this. So that's what I'm trying to get to now. Now I haven't been back on stage in about a year, year and a half in terms of regular touring. Mm -hmm. I just haven't. I just, I took time well, I can say this now. I took time <laughs> because I had like, you ever look at a nigga and know he might quit? <laughs> uh, looking at Trevor, top of 2022. I was like, yeah, he ain't got that twinkle. I'm, I'm not finna. Like watching a stripper. Yeah, I was like, uh, he thinking about groceries. I'm finna sell some scripts. So I focused on writing television and movies all year. I saw, I was blessed enough to sell a couple of TV shows. And, you know, some went somewhere, some didn't. But writing television, I was like, I would rather creatively spend time doing that right now. Mm -hmm. And then come back around to stand up because it's going to take some time for me to do the mental, the mental excavation that is required to really delve into my relationship with my father, and then how to make it funny, and then put it on stage. Well, at least this time you'll be able to stay at better spots than the nights in. Yeah, you know, I still drive by that thing. You know what's weird? <laughs> Every blue moon, and I don't do it often, but. I don't know. I sometimes I feel like I feel like where I am created a detachment from what got me to this place. Okay. And so I try, you know, I try now and then and I'm not going to say I try to recreate every single traumatic thing that happens on the road, but like I'll give you a perfect example. Like there were times where the night's end was a luxury. I was really? sleeping at truck stops. Mm -hmm. Like I was sleeping at fucking truck stops on off nights mm -hmm. because that, and only flying J's because flying J truck stops, the cash register is closest to the curb. <laughs> so the cashier can see what the fuck is going on. It ain't one of them fuck ass truck stops where the cash register is in the center of the store. <laughs> I need you to see me. I need you. You see me. I see you. All right, I'm going to go to sleep. All right. Mm -hmm. Now watch me. Like, so if I'm on the road, and it's not often, but every now and then I'll stop at a Flying J and I'll just sit in the parking lot for two hours and just do work on my laptop. Mm. Just a little, just to, don't forget, nigga. Mm -hmm. Keep Good. hustling, keep climbing. Every time I'm back up here, so I started sex work when I was 18 years old. Okay. I had nowhere to live. I was bouncing around, so that's how I know the night's in because I'm from Jersey. Yeah. I used to live all up and down for a good portion of time staying on Tunnelly, one and nine. So all them joints, some of them joints ain't even there no more. Yeah. And when we travel now for work, yeah, <laughs> you know like, what I'm saying? I'm not ready to be humbled yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ready. no, but it's, it's, it's like, you know, when, especially when we're up here, like I see places and I'll even say to Jasmine, I'll be like, yo, I used to stay there. Like, that spot was wild back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. whatever. And now it's like, but being able to know what got you to those spots, because some of those spots, those were the first spots where I ever learned how to properly spank somebody or pull their hair or pull wax on them or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was I was staying in them shits and working out them shits. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like when you when you are able to have that full cycle moment, there is definitely a part of you that's like, personally, I I, I prefer where I'm sleeping now. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But like looking at them joints, you be like, yo, like 
That How shit do... was that was a necessary place for me to be to even learn some of the things or have the experience to allow me to appreciate where I'm at right now and also like how you said about the sisters that was clapping for you when you came back, you also always remember like, I'm not any better than anybody who's in that spot right now yeah. trying to do they come up or make they shit happen however they trying to make it happen because I had to do that same shit. Mm -hmm. I, like it's, it's like for where I am now in my career, it's, it's Rocky three where Rocky's got a little bit of bread, and then Clubber Lang beat the shit out that nigga. Because <laughs> Rocky was fucking around. And so then Apollo Creed takes Rocky back to the hood. You know, you got to train. Mm -hmm. You got to get back to the gutter. You got to get back to Rocky 1. Like, you got to get back to broke nigga fucking training. And so, <laughs> to me, it's that's the default that I go towards right now, is, okay... How do you maintain that hunger and that thirst? And so for me, so for me, the first step is finding a new target. Okay. I've unpacked racism as best I can. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. gun control school, you know, mm -hmm. prison reform, even when I was talking about, you know, my next door neighbor that's gone for life mm -hmm. for like even talking about that on stage, that was low key the first tiptoe into just personal. Yeah, yeah. Right. like that's, mm -hmm. what do you do when you know the murderer and the victim? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you, what do you, how do you, who do you feel sorry for? Like, it's like, it's that without even getting into the whole mm -hmm. joke or whatever, but it's just, it's a guy I grew up with was a getaway driver and a robbery that turned into a murder. He was never in the store. He didn't even know mm -hmm. that they murdered that dude till the feds came to get him. So mourning two lives lost mm -hmm. yeah. and the dichotomy of that and figuring out a way to make it moderately funny, but that was exciting. That part of my last special was exciting because I was like, oh, shit, this is me, but it connects to the world. Well, what else about me connects to the world? So I have a question for you, a fatherhood question. And kind of keeping on the theme of the show, what is something that you are going to teach your son about sex, relationships, that you wish your father had taught you? Ooh, mm. be honest. Don't lie to women, man. Ain't nothing to lie. I try to teach him that in general, but especially... Um, you know, don't lie. Don't lie first and foremost. And I think maintaining, you know, a degree of respect for women, you know, just on some don't raise your voice, like don't yell. Yeah, like we try to do that. Like, like so much of it is just general base level mm -hmm. respect behavior in general that also is transferable skills, right. you know, over to relationships. But, you know, that's, that's really all I've thought about up until this point. I'll tell you something that I've gone back and forth about with my son, and he's six, just for perspective, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is just with regards to chivalry. Because there seems to be two different schools of thought on on that type of thing. But I do think that above all, something as simple as asking someone, is there anything I can do for you? Mm -hmm. that if you start there with most people and you ask that question consistently, sooner or later they're going to tell you the truth. So that's the thing that I am trying to make sure that I demonstrate, you know, and it's, it's a little more, it's a little more different and difficult now because, you know, we're, I'm in a situation now where we're co-parenting. So, mm -hmm. It's not like before where I had around the clock to show, hey, man, watch me and watch how I talk, watch how I interact with it. So now when I'm in that space with and it's the three of us, I have to be more deliberate because mm -hmm. he's watching and also he's older now. So he's absorbing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and when the time comes and you see me with somebody new, here's how mm -hmm. it's going to work, because I definitely never got that from my pops. Mm -hmm. I definitely never. Like I knew all my daddy's side chicks. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like, I don't think no child should know, it, you know. And I'm not, I'm not slandering my pops, but you're asking the question, yeah. you know, yeah. just in terms of understanding when you get older, when he gets older and he unpacks everything he saw me doing, mm -hmm. he'll see the examples, he'll see the breadcrumbs. So, Love you know, that. I, above all, just ask people if they need something, communicate, talk to people, you know, like be, uh, he did something, I wasn't there when it happened, but somebody told me a story about um, him just being very kind to another child at mm -hmm. like a birthday party. and. And just hearing that made me just feel so fucking good. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. Told you, it's not what they be doing in the house. It's how they behave when they, <laughs> when they out the house. So, in the spirit of time and all this fatherhood talk, let's talk about our mothers. Yes. <laughs> that when we, like, we cannot leave this building without getting their without questions. They, they have questions. But... So, yeah, you know, we have... Um, Legacy. Legacy. In the spirit of in legacy. Spirit, yes. In the spirit of legacy, breaking generational trauma, bringing our parents into the things that we do and respecting, you know, their their perspectives. Um, we asked we ask our mothers um, that we're going to be talking to you, and they, they watch you on the Daily Show. Okay. You know, did they have anything that they wanted to ask? And um, <laughs> so my mom, <laughs> my mom was like... Um, Ask that he, young gentleman. <laughs> my mom was like, uh, "Is he taking over for Trevor Noah?" That was that was one. And I was like, "Well, no, not that kind of question, mom." Well, let's let's. Well, the short answer to that is no. They're doing a series of guest hosts over the course of the next couple of months, and then on the other end of that, the network will decide who the host will be. I'm supposed to get a week of one of those weeks. Okay, that's what's up. Well, her asking that was really her saying that's what she wants. Well, so, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Email Paramount. And, tell them <laughs> and then her second question was, <laughs> her second question was, where can we go where there are no racist people to deal with? <laughs> and she said, is that safe to ask? <laughs> so in your travels, I have to interpret, um, you know, for my mom, in, in your travels, is there a place that you felt really comfortable as a black man? You just got to go to Chocolate Cities. Chocolate City. I mean, there's going to be racism. Racism is everywhere, full right. stop. And even once you get into non-racist, even once you get into non-white places, then you're into colorism. So there's still some degrees of that. But, you know, I feel comfortable. I feel most comfortable in the South, in black, mm -hmm. black ass cities. I ain't never had a bad day in New Orleans. Okay. I ain't never had a bad day in Birmingham, Atlanta, Memphis. I ain't gonna say that you can just go around because you know, <laughs> motherfuckers still might try to rob your ass in one of these spots. That's <laughs> but, a different, that's but a that different don't problem. Count. <laughs> Crime and racism ain't the same right, thing. Right, right, right. Um, they like to make you believe it is, but. Ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd say those are probably the big ones. Uh, Charlotte, D.C. Um, I always have a good time in D.C. And you know what? Low key, low key Houston. I enjoy Houston. Houston I don't. I don't. I don't get there often. Houston does show a lot of love. Mm -hmm. I don't get there often, but when I do, it's always a good time, and it's like dope ass mm -hmm. black folks, like dope black professionals. Because I think what I take that question as is: Are there places black people can go where they can feel like they're in a bubble mm -hmm. of of their own? Mm -hmm. of their own people you know right. like that's what i take that question mm -hmm. as and so those cities are where i definitely feel like oh if you didn't show me another side of town i think the whole city was like this mm -hmm. okay so mom pick one of them cities that you're willing to move to and take care of these kids with. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. you got your I, I do i remember okay. her question my mother wanted to know how comedy has changed from when you first started to now like Ooh. you could take you could take the question wherever you want to go with it um, let's go to the deep end of the pool then. I mean, it's definitely it's definitely more opinionated. There's more there's more comedians with opinions now than there were in ninety eight when I started. When I say opinions, I'm talking about the world and issues and all that stuff. Um I think that society has decided to some degree that certain opinions they don't want to hear no more. Hmm. And so now they're being more vocal about it. I'd say that comedy 
But I would argue, though, that comedy has never changed. The audience has changed. The taste of the audience changed. The appeal of what the audience wants to hear has changed. And so they speak out on certain stuff that they don't want to hear. But it hasn't stopped comedians from doing what they want to do, saying what they want to say. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that. Cool, cool, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I always say like people complain a lot about like cancel culture now with uh, with comedy. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, but I don't. But who's getting canceled? That's what I'm trying to figure that out. Chappelle hosted SNL mm -hmm. after pissing off the LGBTQ plus community, and then went on stage in front of eighteen thousand people and brought Elon Musk out that bitch. Like, there's no. Uh, who's getting canceled? Like I feel like people complain. The the people who complain about cancel culture and quote unquote like woke isms, not even people need to look up where woke the word woke actually comes from and what it means. But like the people who are doing that is more like I can't talk about these people how I want to talk about them anymore. Yeah, but they I think, still wind up doing it. Yeah, but they still do it. But like they are, you have you have comedians who are pissed that they can't do what they want to do without criticism. Take mm -hmm. the criticism and keep doing the joke, bro. Yeah. The people who like you are gonna come, come see, see you, you anyway. Mm -hmm. Now you're probably not gonna get, you're not gonna get an opportunity to do every TV show you want to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. All right, but that's the game, man. Mm -hmm. So either you committed to the shit or you're not. Mm -hmm. And then on the audience side. You can say whatever you want, but at the end of the day, most of these companies only care about profit. So right. if you're a comedian that's saying something divisive, you're probably going to bring eyeballs, which brings profit. You can't expect mm -hmm. morality from a corporation. But I just I just think that artists have to figure out if you're just going to do what you want to do, then do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. People are more opinionated, and there are now people who don't want to hear that shit. Comedians ain't changed. Comedy ain't changed. It's not going to change. But the people who don't want to hear that are going to say something. Mm -hmm. And eventually you're going to run into a couple of corporations who are going to decide not to work with you because it's it's more trouble than it's worth. Right. That's the consequence of speaking free mind. That to me, until you're going to jail, I don't know if it's canceled, if it's just opinions and just people just don't want to hear that opinion. Yeah, I mean, what was it in the 60s they would take? Certain comics to jail. And you cuss. Come on to like jail, that. Lenny Bruce. Come on to jail, George Carlin. Come on to jail, Dick Gregory. Mm -hmm. You so know, people still free to say what they want to say, whether it's people fuck with it. You're or free to say what you want to say. You're free to go into buildings and make money doing it. And mm -hmm. there are a couple of buildings that may not want you in there, and mm -hmm. people are going to pro protest against you. Now, I don't think that's that's the part of the game I don't buy into. I don't buy into complaining because somebody. Hat, don't like what you say. What the fuck is a boo? Yeah. You go up on stage some nights and get booed, nigga. Is that cancel culture? Good point. So mm -hmm. a tweet ain't nothing but it, like, it's a digital boo. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, really. And so I just don't see, I don't see the big conflict but then I'm also a comedian that's not doing a bunch of shit that's pissing off a bunch of people. But mm -hmm. I might one day. I just don't think that comedy has changed as much as the audience is wanting something better or something different or something that appeals to what they want right. has changed. Because keep in mind, they go, oh, it wasn't like that back in the day. Also, back in the day, motherfuckers didn't have all these avenues to boo you digitally. Right. Mm -hmm. And now people have more avenues to see the com the the content that they want to see. Yeah, specificity mm -hmm. is the new broad. Mm -hmm. So now if you want a comedian that speaks exactly to your community, I guarantee you he's mm -hmm. out there. And if he ain't on a channel, he's on YouTube because mm -hmm. they all got these youngins got cameras now. Yeah, they do. They upload their shit. They doing better numbers on YouTube than they would have done on Linear. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know. Like if you hated a motherfucker back in the day, you had to write a letter to the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody doing that shit. You ain't writing no letter to the yeah. editor. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'll Which, see your tweet and keep it moving. Word. To our point, comedy and sex work do have a lot of parallels. Holy shit. <laughs> There's a whole lot of them. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming and exploring those parallels. I appreciate y'all. I, I do. I really do. I appreciate the level of 
I appreciate that you take comedy seriously as an art form and not just somebody on stage fucking around and acting as if they're just talking out the side of their mouth and mm-hmm. this is all funny stuff I just said for the first time. No, it was crafted. It was it was manicured. Yes. It's thoughtful. And, I mean, we take comedy. It's like it's also informative and digestible. Very, very serious topics. We were talking about our styles that we like and – um and it's just the way, I mean, just thinking about the, the work that you do, the fact that we can have our moms weigh in on it and yeah. our te- or our young adults weigh in on like, what can we, that, that's, that's that really, a, yeah. yeah, it's a gift and a craft that you, your talent is something that we can share across generations and talk about hard topics. So we appreciate you. Well, thank you. I grew, I grew up in a house where my grandmother had Red Fox records. You know what I'm saying? And we'll have parties to play Red Fox and Mom's Maiden yeah. and shit like that. So comedy, if that's why when my mother found out, she was like, oh, <laughs> her, her, you going to tell her the initial question though? I mean, tell him the initial question she had or is that going to ruin it? Only if you're going to answer. Yeah, I'll answer. Boxers I, or briefs? Oh, boxers. Um, but the... The 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 ones that the fit kind, the sport kind <laughs> yeah, yeah the trim like yeah not, those are nice they don't yeah they don't yeah. Like, they're not bunchy yeah I they can't wear no tighty whitey they, they, they things <laughs> yeah. cut up but like yeah but just the joints that come down here but they you know mm-hmm. spandexy or whatever I'm not doing a regular boxer just like regular no you're not that kind of guy no you're not staying at the nights in no more. Exactly. I got money now. I sleep at the Flying J. I know that's right. That was, <laughs> there you go. See, that was there you go, my, Mama Lady. Now that, that you listen, she, yeah. she wanted to know that. Mother in love. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the the you really to listen to the sexy music. Now? <laughs> <laughs> you have had that discussion about Sade and Mary J. Blige. Oh man, that's for the <laughs> next. Forget. That's for the next episode. <laughs> But really, just um, what's next for you? Yeah. Where can people find you and, and all that important Yo, man, stuff? man, Daily Show is still churning out new episodes. We're going to have a gang of guest hosts. You know, uh, D.L. Hughley going to be in the mix, Marlon Wayans, Leslie Jones, Chelsea Handler, like just every every person, that Wanda Sykes, like folks that you yeah. know for their political opinions and every mm-hmm. other platform and they're all over the world. We'll bring him and put DL, him in a chair for a week. Like an MSNBC show or something. Yeah, like DL's, <laughs> DL's done all of this. This ain't going to be new to DL. Like, this yeah. is his yeah. wheelhouse. So, we'll be doing that on a regular basis. And then at some point, I think April or May, I'll probably start getting back out on the road. But, right. you know, it's just RoyWoodJr.com. I'll put an at sign in front of it for social. Word. And I'm uh, father to father. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what you what you got. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. So in the for meantime, build some Legos with this boy. There you go. <laughs> Yo, Royal Fetish Radio, Porn and Politics, the one and only Jet Set and Jasmine. Yes. King Noir, we want to thank Legacy for providing us with this crate that I'm trying to get out of here with. I'm trying to get that Marvin Gaye John spinning. Yeah. Thank you, Roy Wood Jr., for coming on the show. We really appreciate that. Everybody, definitely go to royalfetishxxx.com. There isn't an after scene for this particular radio show, but you can see some more for the other ones. We'll catch y'all next time. <laughs> hey, how he many... didn't he didn't do none of the two two five seven paperwork for that part. <laughs> how many of these niggas on this album you think was on the payroll? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people in this photo. All y'all couldn't been getting money. <laughs> oh, that's the one thing Public Enemy did cut down. Chuck D cut down on that entourage. Just like I ain't for pay all you niggas. <laughs> it's just gonna be me. All the, all the oh, Professor Griff paid, out paid out Professor all the Griff. brothers in the nation out of his cut. Oh, well, that's why Griff was so pissed off because he. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also off. why he nobody payroll by himself ever fucked with PE though. But yo, go check it out everywhere with a podcast. Uh, peace, y'all. Good night. <laughs>